We're here with Jeremiah today. We, we want to cover and talk to the applicators out there and, and talk about our products and what they, what kind of adjustments they need to make in winter conditions. And so, you know, we're coming into the winter season and um, whether you're spraying an open cell or closed cell products, there's certain adjustments and certain things that they need to be um, considering when, when applying products out there. So maybe we could start with um, the closed cell side because that's, you know, used more in the colder climates and people have to adjust and compensate for, for things more. So why don't you walk us through um, our different products? Um, maybe we could start with the, the standard 112 and then when do we shift to the, the 112 XE? And um, so, yeah, all of our, our 112 and our 112 or 118, sorry, um, have a cutoff point of 25, 30 degrees for the low end temperatures. That's when it gets to the point where the reaction of the foam isn't enough to compensate for the cold substrates. So okay. it will start to, like a lot of guys, they'll start to see cracking and stuff. If they start, say that if they're spraying at 20 degrees and they have 118 or 112, at 20 degrees, you might start to see issues from cold substrates and those temperatures. Um, now, is that including like doing some, I, I know some of the extra steps that they do, like they may flash the substrate first to kind of heat it up and then they, they put it on. I mean, is there any extra things that they can do to get a few extra degrees? Yeah, I, you can with the 112 and 118, you could um, do things like heat the area you're spraying. I, like we talked before, I, I'm a firm believer in not having to flash. If you have to flash, there's other, other concerns that are going to happen from flashing. With so Cozone. why don't we go over those? Because some of the people might not be aware of, of that. The main one is um, to heat the to heat the area you're spraying. So if you start getting close to freezing, most guys will have heaters in those areas to heat up the substrate. So it's not a concern because if you heat up the substrate, then you've kind of, like you said, you've given yourself a few more degrees on the low end to be able to apply the product. Um, so bring it, bring your little space heaters. And yeah. Don't use, the only thing that we don't recommend is using diesel heaters. Any diesel heaters will add moisture, moisture. And, moisture and condensation to the area, which in turn will make the adhesion affected yeah. by the product because you get moisture and condensation on the substrate. That's going to yeah. turn, yeah. going to affect the product. So a cold substrate with a warm, moist air inside yeah. and you're going to get kind of. Yeah. It's like you're, you're, you know, you're, uh, creating more issues than you're um, fixing that way. But propane, space heaters, anything like diesel is the only one that we highly recommend you don't use. But every other heater, like I said, if you can heat that substrate, you can push it a little bit farther. What are, what are some of the side effects if you got an applicator that's flashing? I mean, I, of course, the yields are going to be less because you're putting that. Yeah, closed cell, you're going to lose significantly yields. Um, anytime you flash, especially in cold substrates, the, you know, the reaction, the foam is affected by the cold. So if you're flashing and then trying to get the foam to stick to itself, the, the co-adhesion could be affected. You could get small voids or possibly, if you're spraying really cold, delamination between the two layers, which, of course, we don't want. Because then you get the whole, because I've heard stories about that of, you know, entire, uh, you know, insulation cavities falling out. Yeah. Because, you know, they're trying to spray in extreme, extreme climate yeah, that's, conditions that's, or, with, or, with, or, or with the wrong product that can't handle yeah. the super cold. So, I mean, that's, that's why we don't recommend that. A lot of guys will, you know, they'll do it because they have to, but we don't recommend the flashing for that very reason. We don't want to have any adhesion or co-adhesion problems with the product. So if you have, you know, we want to have a product that you can spray in one pass and you don't have to flash mm -hmm. because we want the, the product to perform the way it should, not try and kind of insulate the product from the substrate to hope it performs. Yeah. So, so what you said earlier, so when you're spraying the regular 112, 118, you're about that 20 degree limit. 25. 20, 20, 25 degree limit. And then when you start getting below that, you really need to be heating those, um, the interior of that building, or the other option is to switch to 112 XE. Yeah, that's our cutoff. So if guys are starting to have concerns or they, they call and like, oh, I flashed and it was good, that's when we start recommending XE. It's like, well, if you're spraying below 25 for prolonged periods of time, you should be spraying XE because XE is going to stick to negative five degrees with absolutely no problems. There's no preparation. There's no extra things to do because it can handle the substrate temperatures that low and still adhere, still expand and still do everything it needs to. Yeah. And that's kind of unheard of. I mean, the XE has been out for, I don't know, seven, eight years, actually, you know, about eight years now, I think is when we, when we created that, it was a little bit before I started with SWD. Um, but that product's just been phenomenal over, you know, every single season that we come through with winter, um, contractors have nothing but compliments about how it handles yeah, it. Yeah, they, they have a set, most contractors have a set date. They're like, okay, it's certain XE time. And they'll immediately switch over to that product just because they don't want to 
they don't have time to take this, you know, heat the substrate or the drums or it's so cold they can't do it. There's no way to. So to have a product that you can just drop your pumps in and go and is beneficial to those guys. I've heard of some contractors also, though, you know, they'll go out to a job site and they'll have maybe a set of XC and a, a, a set of regular 112 or 118. And then they'll, they'll go in and they'll put an inch of XC on the walls. And then all of a sudden now the building's a lot more insulated where you're not spraying as a cold substrate. And then they'll switch over to like a 112 or 118 to get the higher yields. Is that something you recommend or is that too much extra work or what's your, what's your th take on that? It's not a bad idea, but it's a lot of work to change over as long as, I mean, and once again, you're, you're almost flat, uh, one inch is past a flash coat would be like a half inch, which is the minimum thickness you have to spray of our closed cells to do anything. We don't recommend anything lower than that. So if they're doing an inch and they're letting it, you know, the XC cure and cool down, then you shouldn't have any problems with that, that application. Do I recommend it? Probably not because like you, like you're saying to spray an inch, and then to change over to a different product is time back and, and it's then, like, almost like you gotta respray the building yeah. twice. But you know. yeah, I mean, but in the like we you know in the colder climates, you're gonna lose yield. Like we can't prevent that. XC is gonna stick and it's gonna do everything we promise. But we also say, okay, if you're spraying at negative five or below zero, you're gonna lose some yield. You're gonna it's gonna happen. Like we can't compensate with heats and pressures. We can only do so much. You're still gonna lose when you're spraying that cold. So if you're you know, if you're planning on spraying something that cold to insulate from the other product, your yields are going to be... Let's talk about yields because it's important for the, the sales guys out there, the guys out there selling the projects um, to make sure that they have some type of winter compensation, right? I mean, you don't want to be quoting, oh, you can get, you know, 4,800 or 5,000 board feet yield in the middle of winter with a, with a product. It just doesn't, it's not going to be a realistic number. Um, so what do you... What do you recommend that the, the guys out there bidding and, and estimating projects, what, what should they be using as kind of a guideline of, of what they should be? Well, we, in normal parameters, we have XC at 42 to 4,700 board feet. Mm -hmm. When it starts to, I'd say when it starts to get to zero, you're going to be closer, your average is going to be closer to around 4,000. We have guys that spray much lower than negative five and they're getting around 3,800. So I'm talking negative 10, okay. negative 15, <laughs> which is very, very extreme which they understand that. So I'd say down below zero, your average is going to drop, you know, a few a hundred board feet or a little bit more because we're averaging about 3,800 below negative five. Yeah. So that's kind of the rule of thumb, but they know that we've told them that it's like, okay, you're spraying at negative 10. Don't expect 4,700 yeah. board feet. We just, you but know. it's important for the guys bidding the projects to know that. Yes. Otherwise, all of a sudden, hey, how come how come we didn't make any money on this yeah. project? Well, we're spraying in negative five degrees, and then you bid at you know. Yeah, and they could they feet. could take the same precautions as XC if they're spraying that cold. If they can bring it up to zero, like if they heat the space and they can bring it up to zero, it's going to help that yield and bring it back up to that you know four thousand or above average. But like I said, that's a precaution some guys can't do. So they're okay. I'm going to plan on thirty eight hundred, mm -hmm. and I'm, that I'm good. So they're very conservative when they're spraying that low because it adheres and it sticks. So they're okay. I can, you know, compensate because I'm going to speed up because the product's going to do everything I need it to, but I'm going to lo lose a little bit of yield, but so I'm still going to come out on top. So, all right. That's perfect. Any, any other pieces of advice that you can give to these guys? What about um, preconditioning of material? That, well, that, that's the other thing with XC, the barrels can be a little bit colder too. So XC, you know, we have some guys that will spray when the barrel temps are 55 to 60 degrees. Is that recommended? No, it's not a recommendation because you're going to be affected. You're going to have to have higher A and B heats to compensate for those um, barrel temperatures. But they, like I said, once again, they understand that they have to take precautions to be able to do that. Um, the 112 and 118, you know, we want anywhere from 60 to 70 degree barrel temperatures. So it's, you need a little bit more um, front end processing, you know, make sure that your either your trailer's heated or that you have a hot room for your clothes so and so when you put it on, it's possibly already 70 degrees. So in the wintertime, most guys in the, you know, the northwest, the upper northwest, the northeast, and you know, close to the Canadian border, they have hot rooms, they have heaters in their trailers. So when they transfer barrels from the hot room at the shop to their trailer, by the time they get to the job site, it's dropped a little bit, but they have heaters to bring it back up. So that's a precaution a lot of guys will take. Some guys use um, heater blankets with set points. So you plug them in, it heats to 70 degrees no matter what you do, and it keeps that barrel 70 degrees at all times. So that's a good option as well, but they're expensive. They're, you know, five to $700. So that's a, 
it's a precaution guys take, but it's an expensive one, but it does help a lot. What about for, um, uh, is there anything applicators can do with the, the hose as they, cause I've heard some people make sure you keep it coiled up because when it's on the ground, the, the ground is major, yeah. major cold and that could be a giant heat sink for the heat coming out of the hose. Yeah. So in the winter time, you want to make sure, like if you're, you're pressurizing, you're getting ready to go, you leave the hose on the trailer as long as you possibly can, because once you pull it out, that 50 to 100 feet you have sitting out is going to drastically affect how much that machine can keep warm. So you leave everything on the rig as it so it heats up, so it gets warm. So when you pull it out, you're sit, you're starting at a good point. Because if you leave that hose out, like I said, without, 100, without spraying, yeah, and it's sitting there in 10 degrees, yeah. that 100 feet of hose is going to be 10 degrees, even if your set points are 120, 130. Mm -hmm. Like that section isn't going to be 120, 130. It's going to be you know 20 to 30 degrees below what you set it at. So when you pull that trigger, you're going to have a cold spot. So we tell guys, leave everything on the rig during the really cold months. And then when you, pull, you know, you get ready to spray, pull your hose out, pressurize, and then get ready to go. Cause it's going to help you in the long run. Keep consistent. Yeah. It's, it sounds like it's just a simple tip that they can do that. Yeah. It's just a little bit process change from what they do in the, yep. the summertime. And a lot of guys, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of advances in the protective, um, jackets that comes with hose instead of just having like a scuff jacket. Now you can get insulated hose jackets. You can get thicker hose jackets. So if you're in the cold weather, you know, you want to rec, you know, we recommend that if you have a section of hose that you know, every day, day in and day out is going to be exposed, that you protect that section more. You insulate it so the heat can escape. So cold can't get in. So like I said, it's those precautions that you have to take to make sure that you make a consistent, good product in the house or commercial building. Thank you.